Hello friends, welcome back. Josh here, and welcome back to Digging Into God. I don't want to say welcome back twice like that. That's silly. That's silly. Hello friends, Josh here, and it is raining inside my house. So, here we are back again to Digging Into God, and I'm super excited about what I have this week. This, remember, remember when I said it once a week? Yeah, that was funny, huh? That was a good joke. Anyway, oh, I got another tree. I'm really, I'm kind of wood deprived out here. I need to harvest this. Oh, I'll get you in a second. Anyway, I'm super excited about what I have. It is not a lot of me talking about what I think. It's just a lot of scripture, and I'm super excited for it. Uh, I hope you enjoy it, uh, and I hope that you get something out of it. If you if you're listening to this and you think that you say that you believe scripture and you try to follow scripture, I think this will be really helpful. This will be useful stuff. And if you are listening to this and you don't believe in God or you don't believe in the Bible, that's awesome too. I'm glad that you're listening. I hope that you will listen all the way through, and I would love it if you would send me questions or arguments, disagreements that you have, and I will try to address them. I love answering questions like that and just talking with people, dialoguing with people. I am all about open market, free ideas, whatever you want to call it, because I figure, why believe something if it's not true? What I have for you guys today, I'm going to talk about worship, and has nothing to do with music, what I'm talking about. Could be applied to music if you're a musician or whatever, but really that's not the bulk of what I'm talking about. I'm going to talk about worship, true worship, worship in spirit and truth, as it says. So I'm going to start out with a little intro from John chapter 4. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus declared, Believe me, woman, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. Let's move on. Let's talk about what worship really is how, do, how what's another way the bible talks about worship and this is in romans it's gonna be a lot for moments i love romans this is um you know i'm probably not going to tell you the reference on everything i read but i am going to annotate everything and probably put in closed caption if you want to turn that on right now you'll get the scriptures all right it says therefore i urge you brothers in view of god's mercy to offer your offer your bodies as living sacrifices holy and pleasing to god This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. says, by the renewing of your mind. Not by listening to whatever someone tells you, but the renewing of your mind. Thinking it through. Actually using your brain. That is how you... Ah, iron, finally. I have been digging down here for millennia, it seems like. And not finding any useful ores. Anyway, unrelated. Except for that, that's what I'm doing. I'm digging. Digging into God and finding some iron. Sometimes when you dig, you find iron. How to worship in spirit and truth. What are some ways that you can put this into practice according to scripture? What does this look like? I'm going to start with this. These are really good. My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For a man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Man, that's hard. That kind of speaks for itself. Get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and, after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom, not forgetting what he has heard, 
but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. So that's that's kind of the first point that I want to make. How to worship. Just get into the word and really dig into God. Dig into what God says in the scriptures. And that is where you'll find worship as a starting place. If you live by the word really truly, then you will be worshiping God by doing what he says, obeying his precepts. It's raining still. So there's probably monsters. And I keep looking at a page to try to read, so I probably will get killed. I'm going to take my iron back to my... Isn't that beautiful? That is probably the worst house I've ever built. Even when I started and had no idea what I was doing. It was probably better than this house. This is talking about love. How you treat people, basically. This, Yeah, this we'll say it that way. This is about how you treat people. You can worship in how you treat people. It says, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Joyful in hope, patient in affliction, even when things are tough. Faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not repay. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, Give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Good will always overcome evil eventually. It doesn't always look like it from our perspective. Let's keep going. Mm. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. This is another way to worship in anything you do. You can worship God. Whether you eat or drink, specifically what he's talking about, Paul's talk, Paul is writing a letter talking to people who are getting really fussed about what people eat. You, you know, they're saying, you can't eat this, you can't eat that, you got to do it this way or else it's a sin or blah, blah, blah. And he's saying, guys, it's not so much important what you do as why you do it and for whom you do it. If what you're doing, if what you're eating in that you're giving thanks to God and glorifying God, then that is worship. Now, granted, there are some things which you cannot do and glorify God because they are contrary to his position. So whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. Whether you eat or drink, or if you are a cheerleader, if you're in soccer, other sports, if you like to play video games, which probably a lot of you that found my channel do. Whether you are into writing novels, writing poetry or music, uh, I know a girl who's really into writing, she wants to do novels and stuff. You, whether you, whatever you're doing, you can do that in a way that glorifies God. The next, the next verse I have is very similar to that, but a little bit different. It says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. So if you, if you say you're going to do something, if you take the time to do something at all, then this is saying you need to do it well. There's no half-hearted doing things for a Christian, a true Christian who's worshiping in spirit and truth. All right, how not to worship in spirit and truth. If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. Watch what you say. Then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem and asked, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. There was a big ceremony that was supposed to be, not a big ceremony, but a little bit a ceremonial washing that was supposed to be followed. Jesus replied, And why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, Honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses his father or mother must be put to death. But you say that if a man says to his father or mother, 
Whatever help you might otherwise have received from me is a gift devoted to God. He is not to honor his father with it. Thus you nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition. You hypocrites! Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are but rules taught by men. Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen and understand. What goes into a man's mouth does not make him unclean, but what comes out of his mouth, that is what makes him unclean. What goes into a man is not what makes him unclean, but what comes out. His actions, what he speaks. Actions speak louder than words or beliefs or titles or Jesus fish on your car. He, then he explains to the disciples, Don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? But the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart, and these make a man unclean. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, and slander. These are what make a man unclean. But eating with unwashed hands does not make him unclean. All right. Now we're getting to my favorite part of this whole thing. Before I was just talking about ways of worshiping, what worship looks like. But now I'm going to talk about why. Why worship? Why bother? This is the first, the first step, why you worship God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. People miss this part. They skip right to John 3.16 when they try to tell people about God. When they try to tell people why they should care and the point is that you need to find out if there's a god at all and if so what does he want heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool what kind of house will you build for me says the lord or where will my resting place be has not my hand made all these things i was talking uh a, a teen i know he's really he's into arts and crafts kind of stuff and i asked him i said if you create something, whose is it? If you make a clay pot or a piggy bank or whatever, whose is it? And I ask you the same thing. If you make something, who's it? if you make a YouTube video, if you make a song, whose is it? It's yours. Of course it is. That's the obvious answer. Things belong to the creator. God created the heavens and the earth. God created mankind. We are gods. That's why we need to worship him. And then it goes on specifically talking about Jesus. It says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. So those those uh, three sections there, those three segments, I, I kind of call those why we need to worship God. Because everything is his. He is the creator of the universe. And he, he demands worship. But this next part, I call why we want to worship God. But this is where it gets good. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man. Though for a good man, someone might possibly dare to die. You can see it. There's, you can think of people that you might die for. Friends and family. close People close to you. Think of people you might die for. Now think of people you wouldn't die for. All right, it goes on. For a good man, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We are the people you wouldn't die for. We, were, we are God's enemies when Christ died for us. If you don't believe me, let's go on. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. If you don't think that's you, send me a message. I would love to meet you. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. That is 
not just you know a byproduct that's the wages that's what we've earned through our sin but here's the good part for the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life in christ jesus we don't deserve it but we get that opportunity because god loved us and while we were still sinners christ died for us and then it gets even better because a lot of people kind of stop at after we die. Oh, we're going to go to heaven and everything will work out all great. But God gives us promises. If we're worshiping in spirit and truth and we're following God, there's promises while we are still here. First off, let's just talk about the love of Christ. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers can separate us from the love of Christ. There is nothing that can make God stop loving us. No matter how bad we've been, no matter what you've done, if you think you're too bad to be loved by God, please talk to me and I will give you some examples from the Bible of people that probably didn't deserve to be loved, but God loves them anyway. This next part's one of my favorites. Uh, if you think you're too bad to be loved, listen to this. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If you come to Christ, if you're in if you're worshiping Christ Jesus, there's no condemnation for you. All your guilt is gone. You no longer are bound by them. That is a great promise to me. And then this next part, sometimes life sucks. But you know what? This is amazing. This ties right into last episode about Joseph. And we know that in all things, God works together for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. If you worship God with all that you have, if you worship him in spirit and truth, all things will work out for the good in the end. For God is bigger than our problems. Sometimes it doesn't mean it's going to be easy. Sometimes life is going to be hard. Sometimes life stinks. It's just the way it is because we live in a fallen world where sin has corrupted everything. It's a sick, dying world. But God is bigger than the world, and God will make all things new. I just love it. That's an awesome promise to me. So I hope you've got something out of this. I... I really enjoyed putting these, putting this together and getting these verses together. Um, if you have questions that you would like me to answer, please send them to me. Uh, you can send them directly to my YouTube. Send me a com comment on this uh, video. Send me a direct PM to my YouTube. Or you can email me at Ralliford, R-A-L-E-F-O-R-D, Ralliford at gmail.com. And I will answer as many questions as I can. If you think I'm full of crap, please send me your reasons. Tell me why you think that I am wrong. I would love to read what you have to say. Um, you know, even if even if you say it trolling, you know, I don't care. I don't care if you troll me. You guys can troll me. Please don't troll viewers that actually like what I do. That's all I ask. Be considerate of other viewers. I don't care if you if you rip the crap out of me. Go for it. I'm all I'm game. I love you guys so much. I thank you for watching this video, and I hope that you guys have an awesome day and a happy new year. Ah! I, I, come on, come on. Come at me, bro.